Hello, Internet Trolls. Have you missed me? Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these speaker comparison demo things, and so um, I'm going to warn you up front. Those of you who don't like a lot of talking, eh, get ready to post all those comments about how I talk too much. Those of you who think you're the hottest guitar player in the land, be ready to post those comments that say, Dude, your guitar playing sucks. And this is a big one. Those of you who say videos are too long, get ready to go, baby. You're going to have something to troll your little hiney over right now, okay? Um, here's what I got going on. Got this new Quilter Micro Pro Mark II thing, right? Um, which I'm pretty wild about because I'm getting a little older. I just turned 50 and this sucker weighs 7 pounds. You all see the benefit there, don't you? Okay, so having said that, I got it actually with the um, the 110 cabinet that I'm going to make a you know a 110 combo out of. But before I put a speaker in that cabinet, I got to do what it is that I always do, which is to go through a whole bunch of speakers and decide which one trips my trigger the best, right? And then I am going to have a frickin' combo the size of a champ, right? A little itty bitty like. 15 pound combo that I will be able to bring in and gig with a drummer. Now that excites me. Yeah, again, I'm at that stage in life. Maybe you are too. So here's a couple of things I'm going to tell you up front. Okay, first of all, I am just using this stereo pair of uh, cardioid condenser mics, AKG 451s, right? Um, I am not using anything else. They're just going straight into the XLR inputs on the camera, okay? No compression, no anything. You got that? And that means that, you know, no level set or anything like that. It means that, you know, I'm talking, I have to get down here and talk pretty, you know, crazy to get to level up normal. It also means as we compare two different speakers that have different output levels, if one is louder than the other, hey, guess what? You're going to hear that. I think that's a good thing, right? I mean, that's how we got to compare a speaker for real, isn't it? Okay, so let me tell you about the guitar I'm playing. Okay, uh, this is in fact a standard Mexican Strat um, bought at a pawn shop for like a hundred bucks. Um, it is sporting an upgraded uh, Super V tremolo that keeps it in tune. And the biggest thing is, for those of you who don't know, my main deal is I make pickups. I make them the old-fashioned way, just me and a couple other folks, um, you know, like Fender in 1959, baby, let me tell you. And um, this is sporting what I call Vaughn's Personal HSS Strat Set, right? Humbucker single single in the cool tuxedo, black and white. And um, it is, in fact, basically we're looking at a, a 54 neck, a 59 in the middle, and a PAF in the bridge. But, yes, ladies and gentlemen, this PAF does split to single coil in a beautiful way, okay? Um, which for me, that's the deal. That's the deal breaker on most splittable humbuckers is you split into single coil and it just falls apart into nothing. This one, pretty cool, man. Okay, um, enough said. So there's my shameless bit of self-promotion on my pickups. Go to vonscow.com and you can find out all about those that are available for sale on the Warehouse Guitar Speaker site. Um, hey, speaking of that, let's get to our first speaker comparison, shall we? First, as you know, no amplifier or speaker actually sounds its best without some beverage sitting on top. Now, what you put in the cup, hey, that's up to you, right? I'm not going to judge. These days, it's pretty much coffee for me. Okay, trolls, go ahead. Tell me I've had too much. I get it. It's now set for optimum tone. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I am using, because I wanted to demo 10s, and I didn't have any 10-inch cabinets to do the demos in, I had these little Marshall MicroStack uh, 110 cabinets given to me, and so I'm using them. They are pretty much closed back, with the exception of they have a small port in the back that doubles as like a little spot to stick your hand in and, and, and carry them, right? Um, so almost but not quite closed back, little itty bitty 10 cabinets, a little too small to actually sound good. These are the older ones where the cabinets are in fact made out of birch, 
plywood, though, um, as opposed to the new ones that are, you know, pressed wood. The, ah, the cabinets came to me, and this is pretty cool, with the Celestion uh, G10 vintage speakers in it, right? The successor to the Vintage 10. Those are some highly regarded 10-inch speakers, and so I was pretty... And, and uh, they each came with 8-ohm, 8-ohm uh, Vintage 10s in it, which is beautiful, man, for comparison purposes, right? So we have a stellar, you know, well-sussed out... Um, and I, man, I... I can't see anywhere in these where it says they're made in China, so I think they might actually be British-made. Some of y'all let me know about that. Um, good sounding speaker, though, okay? What I've put in this cabinet is the WGS G10C, okay? That is, and let me tell you, the G10, this cabinet is really too small for a G10. The G10 needs a little more room than that to breathe. If it was open back, it'd be fine. But the G10, of course, is an American-voiced speaker, um, and this, of course, is, uh, it, the selection is very much British voice. Let's start this comparison. And again, what I'm looking for is the tan that will be the most well-rounded and it's going to have the biggest, nicest bottom, which is darn hard to find in a single tan, right? Um, so that I can make my little Micro Pro when I put when I made it to the to the 10-inch cabinet, make it the best gigable amp it possibly can. Okay. And again, tens can do above you know 120 hertz with a plume, a plume, but to get down below there, that gets kind of tough, right? Okay. Oh, and of course I still want a little bit of nice sparkle on top, right? So let's start with that, that sound that I had when I, when I uh, opened up in the, uh, in the neck middle position. Okay. And I will say from here on out, a lot less talking, baby. I'm going to kind of try to keep my comments to myself and let y'all tell me what you think. Okay. Celestion. Here's a WGS G10. I'm on clean, I'm going to go to uh, between bridge and neck. Ooh, all single coil. To the Celestian. We'll do a demo on the quilter a little later, but for now I'll tell you that is in fact in uh, in the first channel. Second channel is full up clean as all get out. Let's listen to that a minute. Still on the Celestian. tones up on the neck pickup with the tone rolled down a little Not quite as uh, loud. WGS a little louder and got a little bit more Fender-esque top end. 
not really what I'm going for, quite honestly. Um, let's go for, I'm going to put on, by the way, no pedals either. Okay, just straight into the amp. I'm going to go uh, back into the main channel one and turn on, uh, it's basically Tube Screamer Boost, okay? Shall we? Neck pickup. Uh, WGS. <laughs> By the way, so I don't have to keep talking. WGS, Celestian. Okay, WGS is definitely holding up a little better in the bottom end there on that. So let's go to some bridge pickup, shall we? Uh, start on Celestian. <laughs> So WGS is a lot louder, and um, don't know if it's coming across the mics or not, but here in the room, it's holding together uh, on the bottom end a lot better. The Celestian has a little bit more organic mid-range I'm kind of liking. Let's do this. I'm going to go for the um, basically the, uh, the distortion, the, the like DS1 distortion here. Still in the bridge pickup. I'm going to start with WGS. <laughs> Let's go to uh, full on clean and do a little bit. Totally on the bridge pickup, kind of like. on the fender uh, sound there man so hmm. what else can i do here a little of this kind of stuff <laughs> WGS kind of 
kind of poops all over the Celestian on that one. Uh, so let's try a few other WGSs, shall we? Coming up next, I think, oh, by the way, what we're going to have is the new Retro 10, the new ET 10, the new Green Beret 10, the Greenback Voice 10, and, um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, oh, and the Smooth Cone version of the G10, okay? So, sound good? Hey, set in. Put a little something in your cup. It's going to be a long ride. <laughs> Okie dokie, I just put the new WGS ET10 in this cabinet, and I gotta show you something. To give you an idea of how much more or much more bottom end the ET10 has, I've been having some issues. You're hearing that, right? Compared to the other cabinet. I thought maybe just maybe something was rattling. It's this frickin' Marshall logo on the front, okay? Check it out. Right? Um, so, we'll see if maybe, just maybe, actually, like, yeah, the, so the ET-10's got a lot of bottom in, huh? Shall we? Is this going to cure it? Yeah, you never know. It's about the only thing I can, yeah. Coolest part about these cabinets is a freaking Marshall logo, and here I am covering it up. Okay. Mm. So, don't know if that's going to completely cure the problem or not, but at least maybe it'll allow us to go on with our tests, so. And the good news is I'm not actually going to use these Marshall cabinets. Like I said, it's going to be in the quilter cabinet. <laughs> Okay. Could one of you please come and hold your hand right here where mine is? Screw it. Uh, so, let's do that jazz stuff I was just doing, and we'll go between, um, again, this cabinet's the Celestian Vintage 10, which is kind of our standard bearer. Well sussed out speaker. <laughs> Celestian G10 Vintage. So, okay. Let's go for some other stuff here. Um, here's my clean tone between the bridge and the... I mean, between the neck and the middle. We're on the middle pickup. Wow, it sounds ice picky, which is weird because the Celestian has generally been sounding pretty warm. Not there though. The uh, the ET10 once again is quite a bit louder than the Celestian uh, Vintage 10. Let's do a little of this clean stuff. <laughs>
stuff the ET-65 has got. A lot of nice organic... Okay, I said I wasn't going to talk. I'm sorry, come on. Troll me up on your comments, baby. Okay, so gang, I had to edit a minute there because my camera started shutting off on me. Don't know what's up with that. So meanwhile, back at the ET-65 ranch, uh, or I'm sorry, the ET-10 ranch, the 10-inch version of the uh, ET-65 from WGS, is in this cabinet, and uh, over here are Celestian uh, G10 Vintage. So, I tell you what, by the way, I've got three sounds going on on the quilter. One is stupidly clean, one is kind of like super reverb clean, and, uh, and then kick in their Tube Screamer type distortion. Let's run through um, the super clean, a couple of my favorite things. a lot brighter. Um, let's go for straight up country stuff. Single coil on the bridge. First the Celestian, then the uh, WGS ET-10. <laughs> from the amp. That's a Celestian. E. So, ET-10, clear winner there. Um, next up, we're going to have the Retro-10, which is basically like a, uh, um, well, actually, kind of like a vintage 10. So, so we got we? the 10-inch uh, the Retro-10 from WGS right here now. And over here uh, is still our Celestian uh, Vintage 10, or G-10 Vintage, okay? So we'll start out on Celestian. I won't talk, if at all possible. We'll go through some clean and some dirty sounds. I'll try to do the point, which is different than the disco point, right? Shall we? How about this? 
top end. Shall we add some gain to this mama? Start on the Celestian again. just sounds like harsh huh go figure uh, the retro by the way is very much so wgs's take on the celestian uh, g10 vintage so i was expecting them to be a little bit more similar um truth is i'm definitely digging on the uh on the retro 30 hmm if what i was going for was to keep this little marshall mini stack together i'd be leaning towards that but of course what i'm looking for is a versatile 110 combo so um, there's that. Let's go up to the neck pickup just a little bit, and then I'll call this sucker done. Starting over here on the Celestian again. we have the Green Beret 10 over here that will be our next contender against the Celestian, the WGS Green Beret. Start on the uh, Celestian, clean tones. <laughs> much bitier than the green beret tan. This is a green beret tan. I hope I said that. Ah, I get things wrong every now and then. Come on, trolls, come get me. <laughs> shall we? Um, starting on Celestia. <laughs>
Okay, probably the most pronounced difference we've heard yet, huh? Um, last is going to be the Smooth Cone G10. This could be even more pronounced yet. <laughs> stick on, uh, stick around. So shall we? Clean tones into dirty tones, just like we've been doing. Celestian. piercing by comparison. Um, wow, the smoothie sounds a lot better than I thought it would. Um, let's go to some of this stuff. Celestian. Much of your high frequency hearing you got left, right? <laughs> uh, Celestian's a lot brighter. So let's start putting on the gain, baby. Celestian. Again, listen to that. Versus. Wow. That would really be kind of specific on what genre you're going for, isn't it? Because the smoothie is quite a bit smoother. Let's go for this really, this, um, I'm up on the neck pickup with the tone rolled back a little bit. I'm going to be doing a lot of this kind of stuff in a little band I got going on. <laughs> Question. choose the smooth cone. Um, on the dirty stuff though, it just didn't quite have enough bite for me. Um, hey, so there you go. I know which one I've got probably in mind to go in the combo, um, but I'm looking forward to y'all's comments. And um, you know, trolls, what the heck, I don't even block you anymore because it's kind of funny to read some of that crap. So y'all have fun, and uh, thanks for joining me for this stupidly long ride.